Good afternoon, yogis. It is 1.25. I've just been in the garage doing a spin class. So, as a few of you have asked for um, some practice um, moves, some poses, um, then I thought, other, other than sending you an email, some sheets, I'd just do a very short video with some main poses that you can practice throughout the week because they thread through the progressive plans. So I'm just going to give you, this is, it could be just a 10 minute video, just giving you some directions. The most important points are that you just don't go straight into the poses, that you listen to my teaching points so that you don't end up with a stiff neck or shoulders, etc. Okay? Right, so if you remember, we started off with a warm-up, which was a sun salutation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that slowly for the teaching points. And then that's something that you can do every day to limber up. Um, so I'm going to go into my mat over here. If you remember, it started off with being on your knees. And then it was a inhale, up, arms up, exhale, sit back, crown to floor, arms out. Inhale to a cat pose, which is your head up, rounded your back, your tailbone up. Exhale, round your back to the dog pose. Inhale. Put your toes in the ground and lift your tailbone up to downward dog. Exhale, push your feet back, your head through and your chest towards your knees. Okay, inhale, move over to plank pose. If you can't keep your back straight, then have your knees to the floor. Exhale, down to the floor, Chaturanga. Inhale, just a slight cobra pose, you are lifting up into the air, exhale, down, inhale, back up to child's pose to stretch, exhale up. I'm going to do it one more time in a faster way. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, over to child pose. Inhale, cat pose. Exhale, dog pose. Inhale, downward dog. Exhale, push through. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down. Inhale, back extension. Exhale, down. Inhale, child pose. Exhale, up. Right, that's something you can do every day to give yourself a good stretch out. I'm going to just then teach you a couple of the main poses that I taught you the other day, Monday or Wednesday, depending on what you came. And the most important one, really the beginning, was the Utasana, which is the, the, forward, the, the forward fold. So that you need to be in a position where your feet are no more than hip widths apart. It's not a wide one. And I'll tell you why, because there is such a thing as a wide one and that's different. The actual advanced version is, head, is feet closed. But if you have them hip widths apart, you inhale. Just, let me just go and get something to show you how you can make it easier. This is a block. You can get them off the Amazon for about a couple of quid. You inhale. Exhale, fold down. Okay, now if you can't get to the floor, a block is really good to be able to put your fingertips or your hands on. Okay, what you need to be doing is ensuring your head is dropped to the bottom and the crown is dropped. I don't want your head neck like that, your shoulders are really, really relaxed. Okay, and if you can, hold your ankles and look, the gaze should be through. Let me show you. Through. You hold that for six to eight breaths. You are lengthening the muscles of your hamstrings. You're working with your glutes and you're giving yourself a really good back flexion. 
so that it really works with the spine. Okay? And then you inhale and come up. Perfect. The other one, okay, is Uttasana, which is, um, Ut sorry, Utita Trikonasa, apologies, which is a triangle, an extended triangle. Do you remember that one? I'm going to show you in two different angles. You need to give yourself a wider stance, wider than hip width, and you need for your right leg to turn out your right foot at a 90 degree angle. Your left foot can be facing, or if you want to move it 20 degrees over, you can. Okay. Let me show you, if you have a block or something, or a book that you want to put, you can put it behind your um, foot that's at the 90 degree angle. What you want, want to be doing now is your torso should be facing it should not be rotated that way, it should be facing. And you will inhale, and it's like a windmill, and you'll exhale, and you'll move your right hand slowly down the back of your right leg, and your left arm will remain up. Okay, and this is where you go. You want to keep your bottom in, you should feel it slight here. This you see this block? It's a block with you happy to rest your support on. Your gaze will go to your left arm and you'll really feel it on the inside of your leg and your hamstrings and here in your side oblique. If you want to make it easier, you can drop your hands like so. You can bend your knee or you can just do halfway. I'm going to show you from the side. Okay. Right angle. I'm going to show you where the, sorry, let me just put the block so if anyone wants to get one, they're really good because the ease down. Inhale. Exhale. Up. See, I've got my hand on the block there. Really helps. Because there's no point in me going all the way down if all I'm going to do is twist my torso. That's what you need to be doing. And then you will do that on the opposite side. Okay? The other one that I would teach you is the warrior. And it was where we were still in the same position as the a, a triangle. So this is Varabdhrasana, which is a warrior. Um, two and all this one is is an inhale and an exhale you are facing your your so your body is facing the front your arms are out to the side your head will go with whichever direction your bend is what you don't do is bend right over your knee does not go over your ankle if you feel that you're going to bend then get your stance higher you'll feel that in your inner thigh in your quads it's a really great one so inhale, exhale. And if you really struggle, you want to put your hands on your hips, you can do. Or if you just want your bend not to be so deep, go for it. The warrior three, Ravadrasa, warrior three, is um, the balance pose. Right, so I've got a walk here. Use it if you need to. So you really need to look at the inhale. So the inhale is arms up. The exhale is just relaxing your shoulders. There's a point to this because if you don't relax your shoulders and you go in like that, you round your back and neck, okay? So it's an inhale, drop your shoulders, relax. We're up here, we're not up here, we're not stretched, we're nice and relaxed. Exhale, so inhale, and we're just moving. You know, the weight onto the left foot, you don't have to go up here, just move it over. And then exhale, palms facing each other, go with the bend, right? I'm showing you, I'm sorry, I'm just holding on myself so you can see what it looks like. Your neck should not be up here. Your neck should be here in line with your arms, okay? Your legs should be straight. Options, 
you want to put your foot down. Okay? Other options, if you don't want to hold on, hands on hips. Other options, bend your legs slightly. That's the advanced option. There is one more, but I'm not going to deliver that to you yet. Okay? And what I want to do is just teach you the downward dog properly. So, I really, really would like you to watch it because if you do it right, it's a fantastic move. So, coming just from all fours now, if you put your feet into the floor, instead of doing what a lot of people do, is just, is just whiff like that, see the difference? I push back onto my toes and my hands in front, my fingers are spread and everything's really loose. You know, nothing's like this, everything's really loose. And I push, and it doesn't even go into my arms and shoulders, because I push up through my tailbone. And see, my back is all lovely and straight. Yeah, my, it's still lovely and straight, and there's no pressure whatsoever. Okay, I'm in. So that's the inhale. And on the exhale, I push my calves down. Now, guys, you don't have to have your calves to the floor. You know, the advanced is, and you'll aim for that. But ensure your arms are out, and when you push back, push your head through and relax your shoulders, and your head should go right the way through, and your chest moves towards your legs. That is a proper downward dog. Not that. That is. Okay, guys. And the last one I'll leave you with, because there's a lot, okay, is the uh, lunge pose. So the easiest way to get into it would be like this. And you would inhale, exhale, push and open those hips out. If you want to, you may put your hands on the floor if you feel that'd be easier for you or not push so far. Extend if you feel you want back extension. I'm gonna do it here for you. Inhale, exhale. There we go. Back as you are on the floor. And you can do it in reverse. Now, these are, them are quite some of the main poses. When we do Sunday, Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to be adding in some extra poses and putting in some vinyasa, which is quite interesting. So we're probably just gonna be linking a few poses together. So I hope that really helped you um, and I'll send it to you. So those are the ones I'd really like you to practise throughout the week. Have a good day.